Would you like to know what the mysterious okay. foam um, is? Do you have any guesses? A mermaid it, was this... blowing bubbles in a the water. Mermaid That's is... mermaid Our bubbles? first option on the table is mermaid <laughs> blowing bubbles. It's the morning scramble. Z102.9. All right, it's time for Nerd News. Do you know what a quarter moon is? One-fourth of a moon? Uh, the moon is one-quarter of the way through its orbit around the Earth, and exactly half the moon will be illuminated and half will be dark. Huh. That is tomorrow. That is a quarter moon. A half moon on a quarter moon day. Um, yes. Interesting. I didn't, I didn't consider the fact that those are— The way you'll see it is half. It's half of but it. But it's a quarter moon. But it's a quarter moon based on its rotation around the planet of our planet, Earth. That's kind of cool. The Earth planet. Are you ready for nerd news story number one? Yes. Let's do it. Stolen notebooks belonging to Charles Darwin, the father of evolutionary theory, mysteriously just showed back up on the steps of Cambridge University two decades after they disappeared. Were they originally there? Yeah. <laughs> These books date back to 1837. These are like Darwin's manuscripts and notes when he was on the USS Beagle. Those are important yeah. Yeah. notes. Yes. The father of evolution's notebooks went missing in 2001. They were being used for a photography session. They disappeared. The library panics and has to search 10 million items to find them and can't find them. It took them 19 years to search for the books, and they finally declared them stolen in October of 2020. I can so relate. Like, do you ever, like, lose a favorite sock? Yes. Like, I've got these little sockies, and if I lose one of them, and mm -hmm. they're, they're so little. Mm -hmm. I lost a Dunkin' Donuts gift card the other day, <gasps> and I tore the house apart. What? Oh. I, I found it. Okay, good. So we can all relate. We yes. can relate on some level. But My, mine was twenty dollars. Your socks probably two. These are really, valued at millions of dollars. Yeah, Whoa. Right? it's but you get the feeling, right? Yeah, gut feeling, like oh my gosh, I lost it. I don't want to say anything, but like, could Nicolas Cage make a movie about this? Yeah, you could have this a could third a one. Movie. Well, the good news is they're back. March 9th, the books mysteriously reappeared in a public area of the building outside the librarian's office. There are no security cameras in there. Oh area. come on, that's suspicious. They were wrapped inside like cling wrap with a note that just said, Happy Easter to librarian signed X. Everything looks fine. Nothing is damaged. Okay, I have a theory. The books go back on display this July as part of a Darwin exhibition at the library. An investigation is still underway. I think they were photographing, right? They yeah. took them out to photograph them. The photographer, like, we're just, you know, putting stuff in bags and getting ready to go for the day. And he accidentally takes those with him. You think so? And it's embarrassing. And he doesn't want to say like, oh, I took your stuff. So he just keeps it. And then the lie gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But and how long did he have it? Uh, they went missing officially in 2001. But they were declared stolen in 2020. So he's had it a very long time. He's had it. Uh, this would be 21 years or whomever has had it. For 21 years. This is weird. These yeah. books have been missing, and now they're magically back. Hmm. Science. What do you think they did with it? Photocopied it? Read it? I hope they <laughs> Do you think they doodled it? Better oh, not. Made check the of, margins. Make one of those little animations when you flip the corner of a notebook. Yes, 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 yes. And it's a fish walking out of the sea. Yes. <laughs> a little fish named Darwin. I hope they did that. I improved them. Uh, show of hands, who in the room has a library card? Me. That's what I knew that was the right answer. Yeah, uh, you're the winner. However, <laughs> a new study looking at nearly 17,500 libraries over the last three decades found that more people are joining libraries than ever before. Really? And this study was done before the pandemic because more people joined after they needed stuff to do and Ooh. things to download, right? Yeah, for sure. So the number is going up. Specifically, 174 million people in the country are now registered at a local library. That's 54% of the U.S. population. Uh, the report looked at 1992 to 2019. Here's what we have found. Uh, let's go back to 2009, when 98% of the material at the library was paper or print. That number now is 45%. We've digitized nearly half really? of yeah. a library collection. I at like this borrowing ebooks. I think it's great. you can. Yes, yes, you can. Paper books only now about 40% of what's on the shelves in the library. They've got so much. Um, wow. 58% of most book selections are now available online. One in every 10 people visit a library because of the family programming. True. So, they but, are very good at that. Yes. So great news for libraries in nerd news. Okay. We've got another mystery. Ooh. Our final nerd news story. A couple in rural Kentucky are finishing dinner last Tuesday night. They live in the country and out the back window. And I don't think it went like this, but in my head it's like, hey, ma. 
what's what's them their bubbles doing on the river? And she's like, I don't know, Pa. Why don't you go check it out? And then he probably grabbed a gun and got out of his oh, rocking that chair. That sounds scary, probably. And then went out to see what the bubbles were doing on his uh, on the creek out back. What were they doing? Well, um, it was slowly starting to foam. The river or the creek bed was like foaming, right? It was getting deeper and deeper. And within 15 minutes, it was 15 or it was a foot thick, 12 inches thick foam was just riding past the back of his house. Whoa. Nobody knew what? what it was. Nobody knew where it came from. So the next morning, he dials up the local environmental folk and they come out and they test it. And would you like to know what the mysterious okay. foam um, is? Do you have any guesses? A mermaid was blowing bubbles in the water. Mermaid That's mermaid what I'm, our bubbles? first option on the table is mermaid blowing bubbles. <laughs> That's what I'm going to go Claire, with. can you do one better than that? <laughs> I was, I, like, is it a prank? Is it a prank? Good question. It, right? Like somebody is pranking this one guy in Kentucky and they're like, he'll believe anything. Just squirt no. some soap in there. So no to the mermaid. Darn it. Not it's a, not a prank. Not a prank, but you were just near the word. <laughs> <laughs> But that was a good word too. <laughs> I was so close. Dog shampoo. How? <laughs> There's a factory that makes dog shampoo up river. What? And they had a leak, and the shampoo went into the storm drain. Oh, no. And because the water churns, it activates the bubbles. And this shampoo, dog oh. shampoo, just floats like an iceberg past this guy's backyard. Oh, oh wow. wow. 100% organic. It's coconut based. It didn't hurt fish. It didn't hurt anything. It's it was, just really cool. It was cool. dog shampoo. That's cool. And when it came out of the bottle, it sounded like this. That's how it goes. <laughs> the Morning Scramble. C102.9.